Welcome back to another episode of, you guessed it, your skin. Your skin, go ahead and say it with me, is a window to what is going on internally. And wouldn't you love to know some skin warning signs as well as nails that you are, well, being poisoned. The most common cause of poisoning is carbon monoxide. And yes, there are skin findings. There will be skin signs. What the heck is carbon monoxide anyway? Carbon monoxide is deadly because you can't you can't see it, you can't smell it, it's colorless, it's odorless. It's produced secondarily to incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons found in gasoline and propane. Our bodies can be exposed to it through inhalation or through absorption through our skin, which is uncommon. Our skin is a barrier to the external world, but yes, carbon monoxide can be absorbed through the skin. One might be exposed to carbon monoxide from the exhaust of gasoline or propane powered devices or through smoking tobacco cigarettes, marijuana, or other smokables. Carbon monoxide levels in the body are measured by something known as carboxyhemoglobin. And we'll get into what exactly that is and why it is so deadly and how your skin is gonna warn you that that is getting too dang high. It's not the poison, it's the dose. And to a certain extent, we all have some amount of carboxyhemoglobin in our body. Most otherwise healthy people who do not smoke things have a carboxyhemoglobin concentration of around one to three percent. People who smoke, it's around 15 percent, quite high. But carbon monoxide will start to affect you, make you feel ill, and lead to symptoms once the carboxyhemoglobin concentration is anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. You might be exposed to it from smoking, from car fumes. Maybe you have a gas cooker that is malfunctioning or was improperly installed. Propane or gas fuel compressors, house fire smoke, or methyl chloride paint stripper. And again, you can get carbon monoxide poisoning from inhalation and from skin exposure. Most of the time, you're going to get carbon monoxide poisoning because you are exposed to carbon monoxide in a poorly ventilated area, like a room or a garage. For example, a lot of people where I live, especially, have generators. And and you should never run these generators in your garage because that enclosed space, you can get way too much carbon monoxide and it can be lethal. Why is carbon monoxide so bad for us? Why does it poison us? It's very, very, very scary how it poisons us because like I said, most people, if you just walked into a room full of carbon monoxide, you're not gonna know it's there. It is colorless, odorless. You can't see it, you can't feel it, Feel it, you can't smell it, but what it does is it gets into our body and it affects the protein hemoglobin in our red blood cells. It gets into the red blood cells and affects that protein hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what carries oxygen around. It picks it up in our lungs from the air that we inhale and it offloads it to different organs, tissues throughout the body that require oxygen, which is our whole body, okay? So this is a big deal to be affecting your hemoglobin. When your hemoglobin is low, you can't move oxygen around. Well, what happens here, it is essentially poisoned by the carbon monoxide and it causes the hemoglobin to hold on to the oxygen so tenaciously, it refuses to donate it appropriately to tissues. So in other words, your body becomes deprived of oxygen. Your tissues get hypoxic, dangerously low, inadequate amounts of of oxygen. To explain it in more simple terms, carbon monoxide poisoning is a form of chemical suffocation, chemical asphyxiation. Even though your lungs are inhaling and exhaling air, that poison that you're inhaling poisons the ability of the oxygen to be delivered to the body. So what are the warning signs that you have carbon monoxide poisoning? To be clear, the skin signs, which I know I'm dragging it out, but this is important. The skin signs once they appear, you are in a serious danger zone. Initially, carbon monoxide poisoning usually presents with these very nonspecific symptoms of headache, nausea. You might vomit, just feel unwell, lethargic, maybe a little foggy, and you might have a little bit of chest pain. But because these are such nonspecific findings, maybe you go to the doctor with these, you might easily get misdiagnosed as having a cold, a stomach flu, especially 
especially during cold and flu season when, hey, guess what? This is even more likely to occur because people are closed up inside, running heaters, etc., and are more likely to be exposed to carbon monoxide as opposed to when we are enjoying the summer breeze outdoors. So um, yeah, the initial symptoms are very nonspecific and could easily be brushed off. But as the carbon monoxide builds up in the body and poisons you further, then you start having a lot more serious signs and symptoms. You can develop full-blown uh, arrhythmia, heart failure. You can go into respiratory failure, lose consciousness, have basically all the equivalent of a heart attack, an organ system that is most vulnerable to carbon monoxide poisoning and to a certain extent may never bounce back is your nervous system. The nerves in your body can be permanently impaired. That might leave you with a permanent disability. You might have a permanent problem with memory, with cognition, may be permanently impacted. It might even frankly change your whole personality. This definitely can happen. It can also lead to persistently low blood pressure due to damage in the autonomic nervous system. A skin warning sign, albeit it shows up later on once the levels are quite high, is your skin is cherry red, bright red. I'm showing you a picture of it here. You can see on this man's back. Another scary skin finding, which I'm not going to show you an image of because it's so graphic. YouTube doesn't allow me to show photos like this. They're too graphic, but it can cause this severe blistering skin rash with frank necrosis death of the skin. And the unfortunate thing here too is that a lot of people say they're in a house fire. They might be misdiagnosed initially just on looking at it as, oh my gosh, you got a thermal burn, like the fire burnt your skin. Oh no, 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 no. It's actually the carbon monoxide poisoning, starving the underlying muscles and tissues of oxygen so they necrose and the skin essentially dies off. There's no good blood flow to the skin. It just dies. You get this bad blistering rash and death of the skin. It can be quite deadly. It might be observed on your hands, your legs, your back, your ankles. Then it can impact your fingernails as well. Your fingernail beds might be bright pink. And for whatever reason, this type of poisoning seems to disrupt the normal shape of the little semicircular uh, half moon white tip of your fingernail. You see what I'm showing you here? It kind of looks almost like it's kind of got a chunk coming out abnormally. All right, so those are the skin and nail findings associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. Very, very serious. People who are most vulnerable to this are going to be older adults who live alone. So you might not even be aware that carbon monoxide poisoning is a real thing. And you may have no clue that it's even happening to you until it's too late. If you live alone, no one's gonna pick up on the fact that you might be acting a little weird and you might just lie down, be super fatigued and feel like I'm um, coming down with something. And then, you know, you're alone with that colorless, odorless gas continuing to poison you. So one of the most important things you can do aside from making sure that you do not utilize paint thinners in an enclosed area, you follow the instructions, you don't run your gasoline fueled car in an enclosed garage, for example, and hang out in there that will poison you. One of the biggest game changers, this can really save your life, is to get a carbon monoxide detector because these bad boys will go off when the carbon monoxide starts to go up and before it gets to a point where it could be dangerous. If you have a carbon monoxide detector and it goes off, you wanna get the heck out of there and call the fire department um, because yeah, um, don't hang out around an area where you suspect carbon monoxide. It really can save your life life. Highly, highly recommend having one. They're inexpensive, um, really. A, lo a lot of people simply are not aware of the harms of carbon monoxide and that it is the most common cause of poisoning. Um, so how is it treated? The hope is that treatment is initiated early enough before too much damage has ensued. So in most cases, the treatment is gonna be 100% oxygen, high flow. Sometimes they will put a tube down your trachea and just pump the oxygen in that way or if it's gone so bad, you're, you've progressed and the levels are of carboxyhemoglobin are so high, they might actually treat you with hyperbaric oxygen.
oxygen. So that's another way in which it's treated. But prevention is much better than having to have the treatment, right? Like that is what we want. So get yourself a carbon monoxide detector if you don't already have one. All right, guys, let me know in the comments, are you interested in more videos on skin warning signs that you are being poisoned? I could do a video on heavy metal poisoning. Um, let me know if that's something you would be interested in, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.